has brought us into this banqueting hall, and his banner over us is love. Love is kind. His banner over us is love. His banner over us is love. Thanks for letting us into your private space to study God's word today. The concept of Zion was used in the Bible more than 150 times, and not less than 30 Psalms are referred to as Psalms of Zion. Zion is considered as the hill where old Jerusalem once stood. Sometimes it's understood to be Jerusalem, the city of David, and also the dwelling place of God. Today's lesson focuses on Zion in the Psalms and leads us to focus on the worship, presence, and deliverance of God in Zion. It is titled, Looking for God in Zion. Let's discover more about Zion. We are Samuel Ngoikuban for Theodore Dixon and Constance Wosu. Let's begin with a prayer from Theodore. Father, we are grateful that we can come to study at your feet. We ask for your blessing through the impartation of the Holy Spirit to enlighten our hearts and minds as we open to your word. Teach us by yourself and then let your blessings come to our viewer today. Teach us from Zion in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 To our lovely audience on YouTube, on Facebook and satellite TV, it's uh, with renewed joy that we express our thanks for your support and for your prayers. We continue to ask that God will bless each one of you in a very wonderful way. Today we're talking about Zion and uh, particularly about looking for God in Zion and I believe we will see him oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as we go about this lesson. Our first reading is taken from Psalm 87, we'll be reading lines 1 to 7, we'll also read Psalm 125, lines 1 to 5, Psalm 46, lines 1 to 7, and lines 10 and 11. Let's begin by reading Psalm 87, lines 1 to 7 from the New King James Version. It says, His foundation is in the holy mountains. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of you, O city of God. I will make mention of Rahab in Babylon to those who know me. Behold, O Philistia and Tyre with Ethiopia, this one was born there. And of Zion it will be said, this one and that one were born in her, and the Most High himself shall establish her. The Lord will record, when he registers the people, this one was born there. Amen. Both Amen. the singers and the players of instruments say, all my springs are in you. Amen. 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 I'll read Psalm 1 to 5, lines 1 to 5. Mm. That's the entire session. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forever. For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous reach out their hands to iniquity. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good and to those who are upright in their hearts. As for such as stand aside to their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them away with the workers of iniquity. Peace be upon Jerusalem. Amen. 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 I'll read Psalm 46, lines 1 to 7 and 10 to 11, reading from New King James Version. God is a refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. 
though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. There is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged, and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Lines 10 to 11. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. 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 So going back to the verses that describe Zion, what is unique about Zion? Zion is um, the city of God, the city of David. You know, Zionists believe that Zion is the capital city of the entire universe, the, you know, the earth. They're looking forward to that day when God will restore Israel and then Zion will be the capital city of the entire world. Of course, you know that um, Orthodox Jews and then some Zionists are still waiting for the Messiah. They don't believe the Messiah has come. So they are looking forward to when the promises of God to Abraham will be fulfilled. So uh, Zion is seen as um, a central focus for humanity, not just as it were in the past, but even many people looking forward to it in the present. Zion served as the center of attraction for those who lived at the time of um, the psalmist. Mm. Mm. Line two of Psalm 87 says that um, the Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Yeah. Wow. I, I believe that the presence of God makes anywhere unique, mm. anywhere different, whether it's person or place. And then the sanctuary, uh, the dwelling place of God, you know, was called Mount Zion. And it is where the people met with God all the time. That's where God forgave their sins. That's where they praised God. You know, Psalm 22, 3 says, God inhabits the praises of Israel. And um, that's where they met him, even though there were other places of worship and even people could worship in their homes. But for some reason, Zion was God's preferred place of meeting with his people generally. And it is even from there that he fought their battles for them. That's where they called him mm. and he answered them. Yeah. Yeah. We did also read that um, Zion appears to be um, a description for those who trust in God. I mean, some of the passages we read. Uh, what temptations are these people who trust in God likely to face amidst the protective walls of Zion? You know, it's important that we, we look at Zion from two perspectives. We have seen that Zion is um, the city of God. God's presence is there. Um, it evokes an aura of holiness, of mm -hmm. majesty. Uh, but at the same time, those who live in Zion need to also be careful. You know, when you go to the ancient Near East, you see that we have what is called the central mountains that are lined out. So they provide security. Those mountains line up from the center down to the end, even up to, you know, Horeb. Now, it protects the city from enemies, from, from invasion. There is a tendency for someone to rest on the protection the mountain provides mm. and not on the God of the mountain, mm, sure. you know, to depend on it. And um, as I read through my Bible, I see that um, Obadiah, spoke concerning the Edomites in his writings. And Obadiah, you know, rebuked the Edomites over their reliance on 
the mountains. If you go to Abadiah chapter 1 and read verses 2 to 4, it says, Behold, I will make you small among the nations. You shall be greatly despised. The pride of your heart has deceived you, you who dwell on the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high. You who say in your heart, who will bring me down mm. to the ground? Though you ascend as high as the eagle, and though you set your nest among the stars, from there I will bring you down, says the Lord. Mm. So without God, Zion is in shambles. Those mm. who live in Zion are in shambles. So it's important that those who live in Zion should look beyond the mountains and focus on God. That is how they can have security. Because whereas... Zion represents strength and protection. That protection comes from God. Um, in, in 1 Samuel chapter 4, we see how Israel was defeated by the Philistines. And um, after the first encounter, they went and brought the ark. Let's bring the ark. Once the ark comes now, we will win. You know, the ark was brought. But the point is that the Philistines muscle strength and defeated them and took the ark. The so, whereas the ark is a representation of God's presence, it is of no effect when the people have disobeyed, when the people don't have faith in this God whose presence is what makes the difference. So it's mm -hmm. important that those who live in Zion and you and I, we should consistently fix our eyes on God mm -hmm. and not the material or physical protections that we have around us. And you know that apart from the temptations within. The enemy can also attack yes. from outside because of jealousy, because of some other special mm -hmm. qualities. And if you are seated there and you say nothing would happen and you don't even guard the walls, the enemy can also uh, make an inroad. And uh, we have examples like that in the Bible. And uh, Ben Bray, from within, like Theodore has said, if you relax and you're not watching, sin has a way of just you know, entering and, uh, and attacking you, you can relax. God is my God, nothing. He's there for me all the time. Like my friend that I mentioned in a, you know, some time ago who says Jesus has died, so however you live, nothing would happen. So mm -hmm. they can relax and feel nothing would happen to them. And it will even lead to a false sense of security. And there is something I call them, um, is it inheritance mentality? God belongs to us, nothing would happen to us. So that makes you lose your guard and the enemy can just penetrate and sweep you. So the temptations are great for those who feel that they live in, you know, the presence of God. Oh God. But his protection is also it's sure. Also it's also sure. sure. It's also sure. But we should not uh, carelessly uh, move away from that protection. Yeah. Uh, we read f Psalm 46 as well. Um, what diverse source of troubles do we find in that psalm? What is God's response to them? And what hope does that response of God give us? Psalm 46 talked about use some imageries mm -hmm. to refer to the troubles. Um, line 2 says, Therefore we will not fear even though the earth be removed. No, you begin to wonder what is it that will make the earth to be removed. Hmm. If the earth is removed, we will still be here. And then, um, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, these are images to describe diverse troubles hmm. and temptations, trials that people can face. But the joy is that in line five, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. Mm -hmm. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. So in spite mm -hmm. of whatever turbulent experiences that may come, the hope and confidence of the people is that because God is in this place, because Zion is the city of God and God belongs there, nothing will mm -hmm. happen. And by extension, those who trust in God, irrespective of the, the diversity or diverse nature of the troubles that we face on daily basis, when we have hope in God, just like Psalm 1 to 5, those who trust in the Lord, they shall be like Mount Zion. It is not because Mount Zion will protect them, but the trust in the Lord, you know, it, it, it makes, makes them impregnable mm. to whatever external or internal forces that mm. they may be. And I was thinking of natural disasters, mm. earthquake, we said the earth will be removed. I was thinking about uh, 
you know, when earthquake strikes, how the mountains uh, jump sometimes into the river. I was thinking about um, when you say the waters run will be troubled. You know, we've had tsunami. We've had oceans overflowing and seas overflowing and even destroying people and things. And then I was thinking about, um, sometimes the Bible uses uh, water to represent people. people. Mm -hmm. Nations at war with one another, you know, angry at other. So some of those things um, is mentioned. But in all that, like the other says, God is with them and he will always protect his own people. In like one, he said, God is our refuge, a very present help in trouble. That's God actually telling us that. Verse 5, he says, he is in the midst of us. Not just a refuge, but he's in the midst of us. So he keeps using words that will they bring consolation. I mean, your means don't be troubled. He said, the God of Jacob is our refuge. And in verse 10, he says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. So even in the midst of our confusion, trials, temptation, issues, we need to learn how to remove our eyes from the challenges that confront us and focus okay. them on our God. Look yes. up to God. Mm -hmm. wow. Let's read further in Psalm 84, lines 1 to 4. Very quickly, I will read that. It says, How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs yet... Yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. Even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. Mm. They will still be praising you. The lines 8 to 12 say, O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. O oh God, behold our shield and look upon the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Amen. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Amen. Theodore, would you want to read Revelation 21, verse 3? And Constance will read Psalm 122, lines 1 to 9. Revelation 21, verse 3. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Psalm 122, lines 1 to 9. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together, where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to the testimony of Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord, for thrones are set there for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. From 6 down, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls, prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brethren and companions, I will now say, peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek your good. Amen. Amen. Um, what is the place of Zion in the sanctuary and what constitutes the psalmist and the pilgrim's point of attraction to the sanctuary? And we, we see that particularly in uh, Psalms 84 and 112. Why are they attracted to this, to this place called Zion? If we look closely at um, Psalm 84, we see that... Um, the sanctuary is a lovely place. Mm. And um, when you look at it very closely, you see that um, in discussing that sanctuary, Zion is, is made prominent, mm. which means the sanctuary is in Zion. And part of the things that made Zion remarkable and outstanding 
is the presence of the sanctuaries. Constance mentioned that earlier. God's presence in Zion through the sanctuary is what makes Zion what it is. And that is why all nations come to Zion. Mm. And when all nations come to Zion, where do they go to meet God? In the sanctuary. sanctuary. So you, the Zion and the sanctuary are, are used interchangeably. Six and seven. Mm. They are, they are six and seven Anonymous. because <laughs> you, it is in Zion that you find the sanctuary. And it is the sanctuary that makes the Zion popular because God's presence is in the, in the sanctuary. Mm. So um, the sanctuary becomes a place where all the nations will gather so as to you know, ex exalt God and to bless him. And the, as pilgrims arrive from different parts of the world, it is at the temple that they gather mm. so that they can meet with God. Recall, I recall um, even before Pentecost, because at Pentecost, the people gathered at the temple, you know, where they were reached. People come from different parts of the world and they gather in the sanctuary. Mm. So the sanctuary was a rallying point for all nations. And when they come there, they meet God and they go back to their centers. Mm. Let's look at Psalm 84 and uh, Revelation 21 verse 3. These are also passages that we read. What hope and blessings derive from the sanctuary? Now that people are coming to the sanctuary, what hope and blessings derive from there? And who are those who are eligible for such blessings? Hmm. In Psalm 84, line 5, says, Blessed is the man whose strength is in you. Mm -hmm. So that's one blessing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then... Um, he said they will receive strength and they will go from strength to strength. Line 7, they go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God. And then if you continue to look at that, it talks about line 10, for a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper. I'm talking about hope beyond this life even, mm -hmm. eternal life. And as you're talking about Revelation 21 verse 3, it talks about the new Jerusalem, where God will perpetually be with them mm. and, and, and they'll become God's children. So Psalm 84, the writer represents the longing for being in God's presence and learning about him and wanting to be like him and preparing for a life beyond right here mm. on this earth where you can actually see God that you've been longing for on earth. And, and spend eternity with him. Well, so, who are those who are eligible for that blessing? Those who are eligible, uh, first of all, you know, the Jews, the, the Israelites, who were, let me say, who received this blessing first. Mm. But for, you see also see that every other person who believes in God is attracted to Zion, because Zion is the point where all nations Come so as many as believe in God, mm -hmm. they are welcome to Zion. I went to Psalm one two two again and look at line one. I was glad when they said mm. to me, it "Let us go to the house of God." Mm. So the pilgrims were excited when they were invited to come. And you know, the Israelites. When you go back to this to study ancient Israelite very well, you see that there was never a time when they moved without some uh, number of mixed multitudes going with them because people mm -hmm. hear about the God of Israel and they follow. They follow. So, mm -hmm. so the Gentiles were part of this joy. They, they want to share in the glory of God. So everybody is welcome mm -hmm. to Zion. And of course, the grandiose um, um, celebration is evident in that passage in Revelation chapter 21 verse 3. When God will permanently be with the people, it's not going to be a moment of visit and go back. Hmm. This time around, we will stay with Him forever, forever and mm -hmm. enjoy the fellowship in His presence. Well, yeah. In Psalm 122, uh, particularly from line 6 down, there's this prayer for the peace of Jerusalem. Uh, may they prosper, those who love you. And it talks about prayer for prosperity and peace. Um, how should this um, attitude, really, the attitude of those who came into the sanctuary and who prayed for the peace of Jerusalem, how should this attitude affect our own attitude towards uh, praying for our nations? God requires us to pray for our nations. Mm -hmm. He wants us to seek the peace 
um, that he only can give to us. Even in Second Timothy uh, chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, he said, it's beyond our nation, we should pray for our kings, mm -hmm. our national leaders, and those who rule over us, because it says it is in the peace of the nation that we also derive our own peace. And you know, it's not just a matter of uh, you being, for instance, I'm Nigerian. It's not the, that I'm, I'm the only one that is called to pray for my nation. A foreigner who lives in my country is also asked because if Nigeria is in turmoil today, it's in trouble today, it affects the foreigner. Mm -hmm. And even as far back as Jeremiah 29, verse 7, mm -hmm. God instructed the children of Israel who were in, captivity. Even in captivity and say, pray for the peace of where you are. You sit there and enjoy there and um, make sure that you, you, you behave yourself mm -hmm. so that the blessings of God will come upon there. So uh, it is our responsibility, actually, seriously. We complain so much, we whine so much about our country, my country, Nigeria. You know, there's so many challenges. But what well, is even my... In other African yeah, countries. and what is my role? My role is not to complain about the government and do all that. Why those are good, they will not do me anything. But I need to go on my knees and say, God, deliver my country, help my country, and touch the leaders so that they will know that you are the one who set them up there. And I think as I pray for my country, it gives mm. me peace. And God will answer the prayer and also give us peace. So we are asked to pray to for pray our for nation our and, and those who rule our nations, yes. Oh. Constance, would you want to pray for us and remember to pray for our nations <laughs> as well? <laughs> Dear Father, we thank you for this wonderful study that we have had. We have felt the impact of your Holy Spirit bringing your words into our thoughts as we examine the uh, chapters of Psalms that we have looked at. And we thank you because you are really enlightening our minds to know how to worship you and how to live in our, in our environment and be people who make peace. We, today we want to pray for Nigeria in a very special way. I ask, O oh God in heaven, that you will touch our leaders, help them to realize that you're the one who has placed them where they are, that it is also their responsibility to take care of the people in this country who you have put in their charge. And beyond Nigeria, I want to pray for other countries in the world. There are places where there are wars. We pray, O oh God in heaven, that you help them, that they may seize this war instead of destroying human beings that you have created. Father, we truly look forward to that new Jerusalem where there will be no more war, no more issues, but it will be all joy and gladness as we spend time eternity with you. Please may this be our experience and the experience of our listener and our viewer and our crew members and everybody we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for studying with us today. Until we come your way again, remember to pray for your nation. And his banner over us is love. Love is kind. He 